Namo Buddha. This is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am discussing my learnings from the Middle East Courses 91. Uh, this is with Brahmayu, uh, known as Brahmayu Sutta. Uh, the link to the discourse is given in the description. So, uh, the context here in this discourse is that uh, Buddha was wandering in the lands of Videhans and at that time there was a Brahmin named Brahmayu who was residing in Mithila. He was very old, 120 years old, senior, advanced in years, reached the final stages of life. Now he was very very learned. He was he had mastered the three Vedas together with their vocabularies, rituals etc. He knew philology and grammar, very well versed in cosmology, so very learned. Now he came to know that there is an ascetic Gautama, a Sakyan, gone forth from Sakyan family, wandering in the land of Videhans. He is a perfected, fully awakened Buddha, accomplished in knowledge and conduct, holy, knower of the world, supreme guide for those who wish to train, teacher and gods of God of humans, awakened, blessed. So it's like he came to know of Buddha. Now, at that time, the Brahmin Brahmayu had a student named Uttara. Uh, Uttara had also mastered the Vedic uh, uh, curriculum. Now, Ut now, Brahmayu told Uttara of the Buddha's presence and uh, said that, please, dear Uttara, go to the ascetic Gautama and find out whether he know he whether he lives up to his reputation. That means whether he is claimed to be a blessed one, fully realized one, but whether he lives up to the reputation. And uh, uh, so Uttara asked, but sir, how will I find out whether or not he lives up? So Uttara said, uh, so the Brahmayu said, dear Uttara, the thirty-two marks of a great man have been handed down in our hymns. Now, basically, in Brahminism, there has been there have been texts. Uh, uh, which are were not very known, which are lost texts, but they were there at the time of the Buddha, where it was like mentioned that there are like 32 marks of a, like a great man, right? So he says, so in he says, the 32 marks of a great man have been handed down in our hymns. A great man who possesses these has only two possible destinies, no other. If he stays at home, he becomes a king, a wheel-turning monarch, a just and principled king. His domain extends to all four sides and everything, right? And But if he goes forth from lay life to hold homelessness, he becomes a perfected one, a fully awakened Buddha who draws back the wheel from the world. But dear Uttara, so, so the thing is that this is the same prediction that was done when Buddha was born. Uh, one of the astrologers or the you know, prophecies uh, teller came to the his father and said the same thing, that either he will be a king of the world he will conquer the world or he will become a monk and he will uh, basically conquer the world but he will turn the wheel away from the world right so now uh, so he said okay sir i will go and uttara went and uh, uh, he came to the buddha and when the greetings and polite conversations were over he scrutinized buddha's body for the 32 marks of the great man he all he saw all amongst except the two what were the two he could not see one is that the whether the private parts are covered in a foreskin and the largeness of the tongue. Then Buddha was uh, a clear audience, uh, uh, sorry, uh, clear audience, so he, clear audience, clear audience, right? So he, uh, clear sentient, so he knew that what he was thinking, right? That uh, there these, these two things he are not able to find. So Buddha thought that this Brahmin student sees all the marks except for the two, which has doubts. So what Buddha said, Buddha used his psychic power to will that Uttara would see his private parts covered in a foreskin and he stuck out his tongue and stroked back and forth on his ear holes and nostrils. That means the tongue went up to forehead, up to the ear holes, up to the nostrils, covered his entire forehead with his entire forehead with his tongue. Then Uttara thought, the ascetic Gautama processes the 32 marks. Why don't I follow him and observe his deportment? That means he said that, okay, 32 marks are there. Let me now follow him. Because the true test of a person is his character. Maybe I'll find some flaw. So he followed Buddha like a shadow for seven months. And when seven months passed, he went back to Brahmayu, bowed to him and said, Sir, Master Gautama possesses, possesses the 32 marks. Now what are the 32 marks? There is an elaborate description given in the Sutta. This, like he has well planted feet. On the soles of his feet, there are two, ten are thousand spoked wheels, stretched heels, long fingers, hands and feet are tender, serried hands and feet. Top of the feet are arched. Calves are like those of an antelope. While standing upright and not bending over, the palms of both hands touch the knees. Private parts are covered in foreskin. Gold-colored. Skin has a golden sheen. 
He has a delicate skin, so delicate that dust and dirt don't skate, stick. Hairs grow one per pore. He, hairs stand up. They are blue, black and curl clockwise. Body is tall and straight limbed, rounded in seven places. Chest is like that of lion, filled out between the shoulders. He has proportionate, proportional circumference of a bunion tree. Torso is cylindrical, ridged taste buds, jaw is like that of a lion, 40 teeth, teeth are even, teeth have no gaps, teeth are perfectly white, large tongue, voice of a Brahma like the cuckoo's call, eyes are indigo, eyelashes like a cow, between eyebrows there, is a, there grows a stuffed, soft and white like a cotton wool, crown of his head are like turban. These are the 32 marks of a great man possessed by Master Gotham. So he said all these 32 marks which are in our hymns, they are present in God, Master Gautama. Then he talked about, since he had been seven months with him, so he talked about certain other things. I will not take them entirely because it will be a long passage. You can read it at your end also. So for example, he says while walking, he takes the first step with the right foot, doesn't lift his foot too far, uh, he doesn't walk too slow, too fast, walks without knocking his hands. Then he turns around neither too far, uh, not too close to the seat, Right? While receiving water for rinsing the bowl, holds the bowl neither too straight nor too bent. He eats his food in moderate proportions, chews every portion two or three times before swallowing. When he eats food, thinking of eight reasons, not for fun, indulgence, adornment, decoration, but to sustain his body. And there are a lot of things while washing, while eating. What is his behavior? What is Buddha's behavior? He was like sharing. Then after eating, he sits a while in silence, but doesn't wait too long to give the voices of appreciation. After eating, he expresses appreciation without criticizing the meal or expecting another one. Right? So it's like that. Um, when he has gone to the monastery, he sits on the seat, spreads out and washes his feet. He doesn't waste time with pedicures. When he wo has washed his feet, he sits down cross-legged, sets his body straight, establishes mindfulness in front of him. No intention to hurt himself, others or both. Only wishes for the welfare of himself. In the monastery, when he teaches Dhamma to an assembly, he neither flatters them nor rebukes them. Then eight qualities in his voice. It's a lot of lot of things he says. When he had spoken like this, the Brahmayu got up from the seat and and robed over the shoulder, raised his joint palms and said three times, homage to that birth, blessed one, the perfect one. So Brahmayu realized that he is the perfected Buddha. So he said, homage to the blessed one, the perfected one fully awakened Buddha and then he decided that uh, let me go and meet the Buddha so he went up to the Buddha uh, and uh, again when he went up to the Buddha he scrutinized his body he could not see the four two things the private part and the tongue so Buddha used his will to show him those two things so that he gets his uh, you know confirmation so he gets the confirmation and uh, Buddha so uh, then Buddha replied to Brahmayu the 32 marks of a great man that you have learned are all found on my body, so do not doubt, Brahmin. I have known what should be known and developed what should be developed and given up what should be given up. So, the Brahmin, I am the Buddha. For your welfare and benefit in this life and happiness in this next, I grant you the opportunity to ask whatever you desire. So, Buddha said that, ask me whatever you want. Uh, so, he said, uh, basically, his question was how... Do you become a Brahmin? How do you become a knowledge master? How a master of the three knowledges? How is one called a scholar? How do you become a perfected one? How a consummate one? How do you become a sage? How is one declared to be awakened? That was his questions. One question, but he asked many questions within that. So Buddha replied, One who knows their past lives and sees heaven and places of loss and attain the end of rebirth, the sage has that sage has perfect insight. So during the process of awakening, there is that person realizes, recollects his past life, knows about the deeds and what the deeds lead to, the realm that one leads to, either one goes to heaven or hell or human realm, depending upon his karmas. And he realizes that I have attained the end. So one who's attained all these knowledges, who, that sage has perfect insight. They know their mind is pure, completely free from greed. They have given up birth and death and have completed their spiritual journey. Gone beyond all things, such a one is declared to be awakened. So Brahmayu, he bowed his head, caressed Buddha's feet. And uh, uh, so uh, then Buddha gave him a talk on 
step by step on ethical con uh, giving ethical conduct in heaven he explained the drawbacks of sensual pleasures benefit of renunciation and uh, and when the buddha knew that brahmayu mind was ready and pliable rate of hindrances elated and confident uh, he explained the special teaching of the buddha what is the special teaching suffering its origin its cessation and the path right so this special teaching is the four noble truths right and we are so so fortunate friends that we are here able to take that teaching in our ears there must be like if you are watching this video right now right till right now we have something that we are we have some merit that we are listening to this special teaching four noble truths noble eightfold path right so we should consider ourselves fortunate and keep practicing the dhamma so brahmayu saw attain understood and fathom the dhamma got beyond doubt so it basically reached the stream entry he went beyond doubt got rid of indecision become self assured so this is called as, as the signs of stream entry there are various stages of awakening stream entry is the first stage so you can check out the uh, um, another video i have made on various stages of awakening so then excellent master gautama excellent and he was like a lamp had been lit and he said that i am i am going as a lay follower so he from the tradition that he was practicing he came to buddha became a lay follower of the buddha and uh, and asked buddha for the meal and um, after some time after buddha left that particular place brahmayu passed away the mendicants asked the buddha sir brahmayu has passed away now buddha had this had this ability to check where the mendicant has gone right after the death so he mendicants asked where has he been reborn in the next life so buddha said mendicants the brahmin brahmayu was astute he practiced in line with the teachings did not trouble me about the teachings with the ending of the five lower fetters he has been reborn spontaneously and will become extinguished there not liable to return from that world that means he has become a non returner so one of the so it's like stream entry once returner non returner or hanship so he has become a non returner that that means after leaving this world he he gets born in another world and he will get fully extinguished from there he will not need to come back to this world so this is what buddha said the satisfy the mendicants approved what the buddha said so this is the talk with the discussion with brahmayu 32 marks of the great great uh, men i hope this video was useful and insightful uh, do share your thoughts and comments in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddha